Hello. There are plenty of stack wall cabin construction videos out there, but I plan for this one to be different because it'll be an overview and I think I will offer you information that you will not find anywhere else or at least not in one nice convenient place. So to start with, this thing cost me about $1,500 Canadian and it was mostly in mortar and be warned it's a lot of work. So I'll do a quick walk around first. You'll notice the first thing is that uh, there's a a large overhang. That's the best way to protect the log ends from rot over time. And also the logs are on a foundation that's about 13 inches um, actually a bit more, 14 inches above the ground. So that's another way to avoid rot. Now I've got my 12 volt solar panel up there and I added a conduit while I was constructing to allow power to go in there. It was uh, just a, a general electrical access. I found while building this thing that uh, it was going to be pretty dark in there. So that's why I put on the extra windows at that far end and um, I've got a skylight up top. And I've been living in here for two, two weeks now doing work. So I've got the wood stove at one end, uh, not so much light there. I've got the skylight and then uh, I've got my bed area there. So this thing isn't very big and I've got a uh, uh, a metal, sorry, a, a wood floor just where I, I live and then concrete everywhere else. Um, I've got a air intake here <clears throat> that you can see just to the right of the window. That's for the air for the wood stove. <clears throat> and up above I have um, it's a yogurt pot in there. If I pull that, then I can vent air if it gets too hot in here. Uh, I do have a, um, I do have posts on four corners here for uh, added support. Although my original plan uh, didn't include that, but I thought that's uh, extra insurance. Now you see around the top, I have chinked between the stack wall and the ceiling with produce bags full of cellulose treated insulation. That gives me a nice airtight seal. And uh, This wood stove here is a uh, converted water tank. I have separated it. Um, there's a platform or a, a separator halfway up with uh, a vent at the back so that uh, smoke goes away from me when I'm lighting a fire or just when I open the door. Um, the door is a wraparound design and I have just a, a, a screw adjustable ratchet thing there and I've got uh, air intake there. <clears throat> got a little uh, welded platform there for drying stuff or in summer just throwing keys and wallet for example. And I used the old uh, cladding from the tank as a, uh, a heat shroud. And I've got stainless steel pipe. You don't want to buy steel, regular steel, because that's the most expensive pipe you can buy. In this time lapse, I pulled the sod, placed a form, and filled the bottom three inches with metal reinforced concrete. And above that is 13 inches of boulder filled concrete. It's really. Uh, almost all rocks and very little concrete. At the very end I cleared the floor, leveled it with sand, laid plastic and poured a metal reinforced concrete floor. And along the way I had to keep the walls dry from rain and I used a water level to get the main beams to within a millimeter of each other but otherwise mostly I just went by eye and I used some custom welding to simplify the carpentry for the roof and I found that an old table works great as a scaffold.
to peel your logs you'll want to first of all have a spud you can get one of these things for about a hundred bucks online I made this in about an hour it's just a heavy metal wedge with about a 30 degree angle on it and an old handle so what you do with it is you make a, a skunk stripe like that that's an old log and then the ultimate tool for peeling you could spend your whole life trying to invent a better tool and fail is a basic spade. So you just go like that and peel away. It's best to do it in one place because it gets messy and also you don't want to be moving those logs uh, for a while because they get sticky. Uh, what I did was I cut in four or eight foot lengths plus two inches because ultimately what I wanted was uh, multiples of 16 because I want uh, a 16 inch log and when I was mortaring I would have maybe a three inch section in here where there's no mortar and I just drop in some sawdust and then mortar in and out and that gave me strength plus insulation so here's a, a dry log um, good to dry your logs at least a year, if not two. When you're stacking your logs for drying, cover them, but do not create a sauna. Leave um, two ends open, otherwise you're going to get uh, fungus in there and the logs are going to be mostly junk. Or you can spend a lot of time and effort with um, bleach to try and uh, knock that out. Whatever you do, don't do that. That's a sauna. Uh, in this case, uh, that's a burn pile. I'm gonna burn that this winter when the snow's two feet thick. So I'm, I'm not trying to dry wood there. For the mortar recipe, I've adapted the sacred recipe of Rob Roy, who's the patron saint of stack wall building. I can only buy Portland and hydrated lime pre-mixed as type N mortar mix. Also I avoided his use of softwood sawdust and improved on that by using newsprint based cellulose fiber treated with boric acid. Boric acid is a known hardening time retarder, which is good. Mr. Roy reasons that the cellulose itself extends the curing time and keeps the reaction hydrated to reduce cracking. So the mix should be just stiff enough that it stays where you tell it to and a ball of it would hold together in a plaster fight. The lime is what makes the mortar so smooth and well behaved to sculpt and it also imparts a self-healing property to any cracks. Do not use a cement mixer. It's awkward and it takes time. Much better to just use a bucket and essentially an egg beater on a drill. Add in your water first for bucket release, then add in all your mortar because it's dusty, and then throw in uh, three quarters or five six, something like that, of your aggregate. And then I guarantee you mix it up. 20 seconds you will have a perfect mix and then you add in the rest of your aggregate and you get a nice firm consistency in another 20 seconds or less and you're ready to go. 40 seconds. While constructing the stack wall I used a single pair of latex gloves which are actually still functional. I couldn't find them so here's a, a new pack just to show you. And over those, I used mechanics gloves. And I burnt through a bunch of those, but they're less than a buck each. So the mechanics gloves takes the, take the hit. There still gives you that tactile control. And the latex glove protects your skin from burns. This worked great. The sand you use will determine the success or failure of your building. So you really need to know this. On the Wentworth scale from coarse to fine, there's coarse sand, masonry sand, and jointing or beach sand. Go with the coarse sand. I was lucky enough to have a pile of number two gravel mix to screen my sand from, and I avoided the option of unlimited free beach sand. With the drill-driven 
egg beater mixing method, you can feel a huge shear resistance in the coarse sand mix relative to a beach sand mix when you use the same amount of lime, Portland, and water. And to make the mortar based on beach sand firm enough, you would have to starve it of the water that the Portland needs, and that makes the mortar worthless. Now, I looked at my sand versus beach sand and have plotted the particle size distribution I saw. And that explains the difference in shear resistance that I felt. Now, you can draw a line on a blank piece of paper with a half millimeter big pen and look at your sand with at least a magnifying glass to get an idea of what you have. For the door, I pull the spring out of this and just use it as a piston. And then I have a weight on a pulley for the return force. And I have a magnet up on the corner. And it closes perfectly. A quick note on solar controllers and in fact all cheap electronics from China. There's nothing wrong with it other than they don't bother to heat sink anything. So that's why your Wi-Fi router dies within a year or two, because the Qualcomm chip overheats. There's no heat sink on it. So in this case, with the power MOSFETs, uh, you can't see very well, but I mounted them all on a big hunk of uh, thinned aluminum on the back. So this thing will last me. Protection. For protection of the logs, log ends from rot, and I did have uh, one or two blooms at the start. Um, do not use anything oil-based. Bugs hate glycol. In other words, uh, used radiator fluid, for, for example. They also hate sodium tetraborate, which happens to be borax, and you can get it for five bucks at Walmart for a box. And so in this case, I combined the best of those two things. So I have a jug of sodium tetraborate uh, dissolved in glycol. And I just use a, uh, a garden pressure squirt bottle and I go around and I squirt the ends of all the logs inside and out. Two years now, haven't had a problem. This is uh, cheap and it soaks right into the wood. Bugs hate it. And I can't recommend this enough. Now, a few final words. I had a bucket of nails and I would bang them into the logs wherever I thought the mortar could use some extra grab, particularly around the curves. And I also stuffed in plenty of small wet rocks wherever I thought I could displace some mortar, save a bit of money. And stepping back from this whole thing, uh, the approach that I took was uh, a freestanding structure and in hindsight a post and beam the way most people do it would be more intelligent because I had to take a lot of effort to keep this thing dry uh, the stack wall dry while I was constructing it and it meant that I couldn't work in the rain whereas if you do post and beam and you get your roof on first you can work sun or rain it was a lot of work and I got a bit tired of it at the, uh, at the end, but uh, I'm really liking it now and so I don't regret it.